2013 Access Conference is an important part of our bank's contribution towards the, the, the uh, creation of this sustainable governance structure, both in public and private institutions. This conference provides a viable platform for some of the best minds and credible global leaders to analyze challenges and to agree on the next steps towards sustainable leadership in Nigeria, Africa, and beyond. Let me just give you a reality check from a few months ago from the Edelman Trust Barometer, where um, the Edelman Trust Barometer said essentially there's a crisis in leadership. Less than one in five trust the leaders to tell the truth. And there are many other uh, issues raised by this barometer. We are clearly experiencing that crisis in leadership. The general public's trust in leaders is far below the institutions. Globally, trust in business to do what is right is at 50%, while trust in business leaders to tell the truth is 18%. In other words, it's as much about the character and personality of leaders, whether it be in the political field, uh, or in the public service field, or in the corporate field as well. But let, let, me, let me put it to you at this point, if I may, Magat. Um, what does it take to become a great leader? Do you see leadership emerging uh, from the lower levels as an innate quality? or not? I mean, you've come up, you've generated your leadership of different companies. When we talk about this sense of freedom, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that especially in Africa, traditional education, you know when you send your kids to these schools and they go there and they repeat after a professor like this, you know, and that is even in the good schools. I'm not even talking about the bad schools where the kids are back in the village. It's four of them lined up in a, in a table that's this wide and just repeating and repeating and repeating. So that's what's happening in the bad schools. In the best schools, we're teaching the best of us to become, in our situation in, in, in Senegal, to become French bureaucrats. I said this to the UN in front of a, of a representative of, of France. And I was not saying that in, me, in ways of being disrespectful. But I'm saying this in the form, in, in, as a way for us to look further. Education is very important, but I would like for us to go away from traditional education, which forms people to be conformist and move more into type of, the type of innovative education that helps people develop a critical mind and their innovative minds and their sense of, um, you know, uh, become critical thinkers and independent thinkers. That's key. To me, that's a key to a good leader. Right. No leader in a modern organization can assume the unique leadership role. And, and let me just give you an example of this. You know, we've just put together the most complex piece of project management that any country at any time undertakes. There's nothing more challenging than the delivery of an Olympic Games. And let me just put that slightly into perspective. 13 years ago, three of us sat in a restaurant in West London thinking this would probably be quite a good idea. And on the eve of the opening ceremony, we have an organizing committee of 8,500 people. We have 200,000 people working within London to help this deliver, to be delivered. We have 70,000 volunteers we put on top of that, and probably another million people around the UK. So when you are bringing teams together, that can only, by that very definition, be a shared leadership. And the, the, the role that I had if we wanted to just sort of define my own leadership role, it was to create an environment where the smartest people of their generation could come together and pr produce something that gave them space. And going back to my Olympic career, what is the one thing I did not want yes. on the eve of an opening, opening competition, I did not want to go onto that warm-up track thinking that there was any stone left unturned because there's and the teams around me had figured that out. Now, what would your message to those who are not convinced by this being an issue be? But I, I actually thought that the question needs to be understood better. Leaders must respond to anything that comes their way as to how they respond, whether they've responded properly or they've not responded properly is another matter entirely. And you but know Mar you, describes them as men of a certain generation. Yeah and, and that's her response to them. Okay, they are pushing and she's pushing back. And at some point this will settle somewhere. Um, again 
the response of leadership to an event will determine ultimately what we will describe or accept as the greatness or the failure of that leadership. Now, for those who are talking about devolving power down to be able to not take all decisions, um, the leader as a person is completely, in my view, different from leadership as a concept, okay? And the role of the leader, the most significant role, in my view, is to engender leadership within the organization from the bottom to the top and let everybody or anybody that's working, whether it's on a project or in a company, be able to show a measure of leadership in the context of what they are faced with on a regular basis. Leadership does not reside exclusively in the leader. Yes. Leadership yes. must spread across here. All right, I'm getting a lot of questions here, but let me just put this one to bed. Uh, what do you read into the 50-50? Are there a lot of people out there who really don't think there's a major challenge, Chris? So, there's a science fiction writer who, who said a great thing. He said, the future is already here, it's just unevenly distributed. And so when we talk about 50-50, it means we have both in existence at once. We have Maggette and we have the person she was talking to. What's different is that people have choices. So if you are living in the future of business and lead politics and leadership, and you don't like the partner you're talking to, you can find a partner that you like better. Very true. And that's what's happening in, in the, the millennial generation in the United States chooses a job uh, depending on whether they think those are my peeps, as they say. Uh, those are those people like me uh, who get what I get. Access Bank today is a first tier bank in Nigeria. That is not just a statement, but a clear fact for all in the financial industry to see. Today, the Access Investor Conference 2013, holding here at the Co Hotel, has been unique already. And this wouldn't have been possible without the dynamic leadership of Mr. Aikboje Aik Imokwede, one who has been driving this industry for a decade, and is here today for just an exclusive. A lot to learn from him, because leadership in Africa has been a challenge. But with people like this, there's a lot to learn. So it's great to have Mr. Aikboje Aik Imokwede. Great to have you, sir. Thank you. Now, sir, you know, Africa, people have looked at Africa as a place that uh, has been struggling and having challenges. And the financial industry has been one of prospects. With Access Bank evolving for the past 10 years, performing exceedingly above even expectations, there are models that really drove uh, this bank. We'd like to know those models, because when you look at great banks in, in Europe and America, like Morgan, uh, like JP Morgan, like Goldman Sachs, with banks like Access, there is a bright future for Africa. What are those models that drove this great bank? Thank you. I wouldn't say they are models per se. I would say they are principles. Okay. Leadership is really not that complex at the end of the day. And the first thing that um, leadership is about is about setting direction, mobilizing people and resources around a cause, articulating the reason why you want to do something, whether it's create a great company, host a wonderful conference, whatever it is you seek to do. And it's the process of getting people to move from point A to point B, however it is measured and so on. Some of the principles that you find where good leadership is at play are principles of excellence, principles of fairness, principles of merit, very, very clear communication, measurements, ownership, and so on. And in Access Bank, what we did right from 2002 was put ourselves in a room. We used to call it going to the bush. And we looked at different institutions, different persons, different styles of leadership. What are the principles that tend to be universal? 
we distill them, and then we said, how would we apply them in the case of Access Bank? So when it came to the vision, we asked ourselves, okay, fine, what do we want to be? And it was simple, we said, we wanted to transform what was then really a lackluster institution into a world-class financial services provider. The vision remains true today, but it has evolved to an articulation which says we want to be Africa's most respected bank. So you can see that it's consistent. Okay? Now, what type of people do we want? You said simply, this type of journey, this type of mission that you have embarked on can only be attained with the very best. So we said there won't be compromises. Whether it is experienced hires or bringing in fresh graduates from whichever universities, they would be the best of the best. The next thing was, what is our customer value proposition? With that type of bold vision, you couldn't say to yourself, you want to be just any other bank. You couldn't say to your customers, I want to be just better than the run of the mill, average or typical Nigerian or African bank. We said to ourselves, you know what? We are going to look at every customer and make this promise that either in terms of your revenues or in terms of your costs, when Access Bank interacts with you by way of services, by way of products, we promise you that we will reduce the cost of doing business or will increase your revenues. And if we don't do it, don't give us any business. And so in 2002, with nothing and from nothing, applying such principles, we started to talk to our customers. We started to deliver on these promises. And one by one, you know, the business began to expand. But then, you know, responsible corporate organizations don't just think of profits because you have to sustain this. You have to think of how do you continuously serve your customers, provide rewards to your shareholders, your employees, to the government in way of taxes and so on for the long term. And so we think through our community, we think through our environment, and we say, how can we make essentially the world a better place by virtue of the fact that Access Bank exists? And in our way, we have come to intervene in Nigeria. We have become known as flag bearers for responsible business practices. This is not the first conference that we have convened. We have convened conferences that have led to the introduction of IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, into Nigeria. We have convened conferences that have led to the institution of sustainable banking principles in Nigeria. Today, I take great joy in the feedback from people that this is the best conference that Access Bank has organized that they have attended. And so beyond the organization, the standards of excellence, I look for a Nigeria that will take the benefits of the learnings of sustainable leadership and have private sector and public sector organizations transform these lessons into actionable uh, 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 items you know, that will make an impact on the greater society.